Hey guys, still here and welcome to this War Game Red Dragon South Africa preview vid. Now, before I get your hopes up, and I don't mean to do that, this is not an overview vid of the nation pack with all the stats of all the units, because I don't have those. This is just me being curious, having a look at what sort of units South Africa has, what sort of units were listed on the Steam page where Eugen made the announcement of the South Africa pack, and then having a look at what some of these units could be in Wargame. So we're just going to be looking at some uh, pictures of various military units in this video. I have no specs, I have no availability numbers, nothing. I know as much as you do after you read the Steam page. Now, um, quick overview, the SADF, South African Defense Forces, Eugen's adding close to 90 new units. Um, this, of course, would potentially include, um, let's say, Infantry A, which is going to have uh, Vehicle X, Vehicle Y, Vehicle Z. I'm not sure if they consider that three new units or one. I think they consider that three, considering that we have, what was it, 1988 units in the armory, something to that range. Yet, it's not like you have that many different units. Um, it's infantry with different transports, which are considered various different units. 20 new vehicle modules or vehicle models, and um, it's going to be voiced in Afrikaans or African accented English. I'm not sure if they're still questioning which one it's going to be, or if you can pick. Um, Afrikaans is closely rated to Dutch. We have a bit of a history there, which I'm not going to go into. So um, I have, well, I think I'm fairly competent at being able to pronounce most of these units. Uh, why South Africa? This was not my choice before you start blaming this on me. Um, according to the Steam page, it has a large indigenous armaments industry which basically means that they have a lot of homegrown units, a lot of units that you might not have seen in Wargame yet. Uh, Doctrine-wise, again, quoted from the Eugen Post, this is not necessarily how the South African army actually operated, but um, I'm going to go on Eugen's post here because it's their game, and they're going to implement the South African army in a way that they see fit. It's highly mobile and aggressive. Uh, it has a, a very, very steep or very sharp motorized focus. And the Eugen Post says that it makes sense. If you're in the savannah, you don't want all sorts of tracked vehicles because they don't work that well. Now this immediately um, makes me think of Anzac, which also has this same sort of exceptionally mobile doctrine. They have hardly any mechanized units in the South African army. That's something I underscored there because it is going to make for an important uh, let's say, how do, should I put this? It's going to make for a very specific playstyle. You hit fast and potentially relocate to a different flank if you cannot break through on one particular area. It also makes me question how much staying power they have, because at least in what I have seen from Wargame, um, having tanks, having super heavies is rather important if you want to stay somewhere and even more important if you want to attack. If they don't have any of that, well, it's going to be uh, an interesting experience playing as South Africa. So let's have a look at some of the units. This is the Ratel, um, the APC. Well, according to Eugen, it has all sorts of uses. It can be used as an APC, so let's say more strictly an infantry transport. You also have it in an IFV variant. Uh, you can use it as a command vehicle. It was listed as command there. It can be a surface-to-air missile, or, well, <laughs> not the vehicle, but it can carry a surface-to-air missile system, and it can even function as a recon. So you can probably expect to see a lot of these ratels in the field. Something that looks a bit like it is the Eiland. Um, you might recognize this as the Panhard AML, which is a, I think it's a South African variant, uh, something that resembles it anyway. Looks like it has a 90 mil. Then we have the, and excuse the terrible image, I couldn't find anything better. This is the Cactus, basically a South African version of the Crotal. Uh, probably a really nice anti-air system. Uh, the Crotals that we have in game at the moment are really nice. Of course, they do lack a bit of ammunition storage. Once you fire all four missiles, you're going to have to go and resupply. But when they hit at least the French... And of course, to some extent, also the Chinese. 
Uh, they hit hard and they're accurate. Next up, um, this is supposedly their only mechanized unit, the Oliphant. Translation, elephant. Uh, it's a Centurion, a 105 according to Wikipedia, and it was later on upgraded into the Mark 1B. That's why I have a question mark there. It's something that I think is going to make for a, let's say, a different variant of the unit. Maybe like you have uh, the, the Merkava 1, Merkava 1B, etc. And that we're going to see something similar here. So you might get different variants of the Oliphant. I'm not exactly sure. Logistics-wise, we're going to probably see a lot of these. The Samil, which is South African military. They're just various, uh, well, various degrees of this form of a truck. This looks like a logistics vehicle. Um, we're also going to see these things armed with anti-air. They are used as, let's say, a weapon carrier for various different, vari well, various different weapon systems. Uh, this looks like a really interesting and, again, motorized truck, the Caspir. Armored personnel carrier, considering that it is supposedly uh, bomb-proof, I think that we can expect this thing to have, in-game, a decent amount of armor. Probably more than just one point of armor protection, maybe two. Considering it's an APC and wield, I am interested to see how they're going to balance this out. Because if you have a wheeled vehicle which has a lot of armor and, for example, supports with a 762, you can have a pretty nice infantry support vehicle. And I look forward to seeing how that's going to play out in game. Next up, different image of the Caspir. Um, how many different variants we're going to get of this thing, I don't know. Another transport, and I mean infantry transport, is going to be the Buffel. Or the buffel, as you would, uh, as you would more Dutchly pronounce it, if that's a term. Um, what I find interesting about this truck, this one actually looks like a dump truck. Look at this. It's if you look at this one, it looks like it has just your standard cabin, but it doesn't. It only has a cabin on one side, and the let's say the right hand side of the vehicle, the starboard side, if you will. I'm not exactly sure what you put on there, but I wouldn't be surprised if you could park your 762 there. Um, whether this is the logistics variant or whether you just uh, dump your infantry out the back, I don't know. But again, wheeled vehicle. Uh, this one particularly looks like it has a lot of ground clearance. And considering that Wargame treats wheeled vehicles with at least 150 kilometers um, motorized speed on roads and this ground clearance, we might see something that has 80 to 100 kilometers off-road speed as well. Next, and I really love the design of this thing, the Roycat. Armored reconnaissance, 76 millimeters. How they're exactly going to put this in? I'm not sure. You could put this in the vehicle tab, much like the Anzac vehicle. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about the Vickers Mark 11 there. It could also be in the recon tab. Maybe both. Maybe you have one that has, uh, like the LAV 25, you have one in the vehicle tab, and you have a more expensive one with less availability, that is, in the reconnaissance tab. Who knows? Here, another uh, side shot of the Roycat. Um, I really like the look of this thing. It's an 8x8, so 8-wheeled, uh, uh, of course, 8-wheeled vehicles, duh. 8 um, wheels, and all wheels are powered. So I'm, again, expecting a lot of mobility from this vehicle. Another nice shot from the rear. Considering this wheeled focus, uh, this thing is potentially going to be an excellent flanker. Much like the Vickers Mark 11, you can expect, at least I would expect, this thing to have quite a lot of armor piercing capability. They're not really going to get that much armor pierce from their tanks, if any, because they have such a high motorized focus. And that means that these things are probably going to have to punch well above their weight class. They might be glass cannons, delivering quite a punch and then scooting the hell out before they get killed off. Because a frame like that, I don't expect that to take a lot of hits. Uh, then we have the G6 Ranoster. This means rhinoceros. Interestingly, it's a wheeled howitzer. Again, wheeled. Most howitzers, if not 
all of them in Wargame. Well, I think the Ondava is wheeled as well. Um, most howitzers in Wargame are tracked, making them slower. These things would also be excellent at shoot and scoot. You move somewhere, you fire off a couple of shells, uh, potentially smoke shells to make sure that your fragile motorized vehicles can get across an open space quickly, drop off infantry uh, and pull back. And then after the uh, Renoster has fired a couple of shells, you move the hell out. Um, I also found this shot really, really high incline. And I again, I find it an interesting vehicle. Good look of it. The driver sits far in the front. Of course, that has absolutely no bearing on how Wargame treats it, but I thought it looked like a very, very interesting vehicle. Next up, and excuse the terrible image, but these things are very obscure. This is the Eastervark, uh, which basically means porcupine. 20 millimeter anti-air unit. Expect no radar on these, <laughs> at least based on what I'm seeing here. Uh, probably not radar guided. Basically your 20 millimeter anti-air truck, like we have in a few other nations as well. The bigger brother is going to be the Bosvark. And this one is the uh, ZU 23 millimeter anti-air gun, dual barrel. Again, I'm not seeing a radar on this thing. Doesn't mean that Eugen doesn't conjure one up so that you have, an, uh, let's say, an unradar guided or an unguided anti-air platform and a radar guided. And of course, this thing, if it's radar guided, it's going to require a bit more micro, but will also be more accurate and have more range. At least that's usually how they treat it. Again, though, uh, both the Eastervark and the Bosvark, mobile, highly mobile, wheeled vehicles. And considering how infantry generally does not like to get shot at by both 20 and 23 millimeter guns, these might not strictly be used in an anti-air role. I would imagine deploying these in a fire support role could prove potent. And especially since, let's say, the, the Eastervark is potentially not radar guided, if you have one of these at 15, 20, 25 points, they could be very nice to have on the front line. And they could, if you're trying to charge a town or maybe even clear uh, a forest line, not clear a forest, <laughs> let me underline that, not clear a forest, but clear a forest line, they could be interesting units for supporting your infantry. Also for supporting your infantry or various other destructive purposes, the Valkyrie MLRS, these have 24 tubes of 127 millimeters. Um, I'm not sure. No, this is not the right image for it, however. Um, I think I used the same image for this one, which is the Bataleur MLRS. This one carries 40 tubes, but I think I used the same image by mistake. So I'm sorry about that. 127 millimeter, again, motorized and, of course, shoot and scoot. Do not leave your artillery parked in any given position or they will get destroyed, uh, potentially by me and my preference to use the ATCAMs to do just that. Then, moving on to some more flying stuff, we have the Royvalk. Reconnaissance Hilo reminds me a bit of the Tiger in the, uh, the dual-seater, but the sense that they have a dual-seater uh, behind each other in various different inclines. Of course, Apaches use this too to some extent, but it's not as pronounced. What this thing is going to be armed with, I don't know. I think it might be the South African gunship. So expect anti-tank missiles, rocket pods, uh, and a 20mm gun. The 20mm gun is something I pulled off of Wikipedia, and the rest I don't know. We'll just have to see what Eugen decides to give to this unit. Then, the Buccaneer. Uh, most definitely a bomber. Older bomber at that. And this is something that I've come across at least quite a bit when it comes to the South African Air Force. The, um, the let's say, dated aircraft that they might be using. Which, mm, again, it reminds me of Anzac a bit. Anzac has some highly modern aircraft, but most of it is just a bit outdated. Um, the Buccaneer, however, at least I know that Sparky is very enthusiastic about this thing finally making it into a war game. Supposedly, it drops a hell of a payload. And of course, that's probably going to come at a cost. I imagine this thing is going to do in game 750 to 900 kilometers an hour. That means it will be easier to intercept. 
and unless you pack a hell of an ECM suite on there, it's going to be pretty easy to hit as well. How many hit points it has, I don't know. We'll just have to see about that when the DLC comes out. And of course, even then, it can still be rebalanced. The Vampire. Um, I was quite surprised to see that this thing was designed and put into service, I believe, in the 1945, if I remember that correctly. So, considering that the South Africans still had this thing later on, I'd say it might be a cheap fighter or rocket attack pod or rocket pod attack aircraft. Something like that, where in Wargame you have various other units who do the same thing. You have, for example, the Harrier. Now, Harrier is far more modern, but you have one of the cheap early game Harriers, and they have rocket pods. Uh, they're not fast, they're not survivable, but if you need something killed, like a CV, for example, and you can do that with rocket pods, then these things might actually be price effective. Next up is the Impala. Uh, no, it's it's not coming from Impale. The Impala, well, maybe it is actually. Um, Impala is a form of a uh, gazelle. I find that quite a few of the African units are named after indigenous species. Light attack aircraft, at least that's what it says. I wouldn't be surprised at all if we we're going to find napalm packed under those wings at some point as a payload. Maybe some 250 kilogram bombs, maybe rocket pods, something like that. They also have, um, as Wiki, no, not as Wiki states, but as Eugen states, various Mirage variants. Whether this is going to be their seed platform, I don't know. Maybe. Um, I'm not even sure if they have any. There are quite a few nations in Wargame that don't have a seed aircraft. And that, of course, is going to be. It's going to be a detriment. If you want to use bombers, and if you want them to return safely, you might need seed. So either you're going to be relying upon your allies to bring these things, or, well, maybe we're going to see one of the Mirage variants as a seed aircraft. Uh, this one I found very interesting, the Cheetah. Indigenously designed fighter, I believe it was. Um, I couldn't find many images of these. For the next aircraft, however, it was even worse. The Carver, yeah, it's a model. It was a prototype. Uh, production got cancelled, and I think that beyond having one or two prototypes which were actually flying, there were no further designs for this particular aircraft. Which suits Wargame just fine, of course. Because in Wargame it's not required that you have a large series of units. We have plenty of prototype units, and this is just one of them. Elouette 3, uh, pretty familiar to have this thing in the game. I suspect we're going to see it in a recon roll, because that's what most of these things seem to be. Uh, I wouldn't know if you could pack any guns onto it, probably nothing more than a 20 mil. Then they have the Super Frelon, a French aircraft originally, and it was adjusted slash produced for and or by South Africa itself. Whether it's going to be a logistics helo or a transport, I don't know. Considering the size of it, I think it's more likely to be a logistics helicopter. But then again, we've also seen in the German army, the German deck, that they use a CH-53 just to drop off a sniper team. So I wouldn't be surprised if you can use these as both. Another aircraft, um, very, very much resembling the Puma 330, is the Oryx. It's an interesting design, this. According to Wikipedia, it's... Well, it was considered as an attack helicopter. And um, that's a bit curious. Because, well, it's, an, uh, it's a transport, basically. At least that's how we know it. And sure enough, we have the uh, Puma Pirate in the game. Quite potent with the rocket... No, not rocket pods, with their uh, guns. But... I wouldn't really classify them as gunships or attack helicopters. So how exactly the Oryx is going to do in-game, I don't know. Now that pretty much concludes the video. Um, there are some other weapon systems that were named. They're going to be carried by infantry. But I didn't really think it would be interesting to see those guns and weapon systems. You can look them up for yourselves. Um, the way that I wanted to do this video is just to see what sort of vehicles we can expect. What sort of models Eugen might be working on and especially what sort of play style we're going to get from the South Africans. 
again, I expect something highly, highly mobile. I'm curious to see how well they deal with enemy armor. Uh, you're going to need quite a lot of potent anti-tank vehicles if you want to scare off enemy armor. The beauty of that is, um, if they get a good anti-tank weapon and they put it on a mobile vehicle, it's probably going to be um, hit and run and also use your mobility as armor. So you shoot, ideally with a fire and forget, although I'm not even sure if there are any fire and forget vehicle mounted ground based weapons in the game. Uh, I don't think so, actually. I mean, you got the Apaches with their fire and forgets, the, the Hellfires, but everything else I think is guided in one way or another. So yes, you'd still have to maintain your position until the target gets killed off. Now, I'm very much looking forward to this DLC. Again, I don't know when it comes out. We'll just have to wait and see what Eugen has in mind. And then we'll see uh, what sort of units they get introduced with. So what sort of infantry gets transported by what vehicle? And what sort of potent combinations can you build with that? Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. Again, I hope I didn't hype you up with this video too much. That was not the point. Just my own curiosity to see what they were doing, what sort of units you can expect. And uh, well, it looks to be an interesting deck. Mobility suits me. Um, staying power, we'll see. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll uh, see you soon for more videos.